Ah, another day, another dollar. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Have sex with a Scorpio. I could glue bridge your dad. I'm naked. Hold on. <laughs> we will be flicking the beans to that. <laughs> but she's tatted, and I take meth. Is somebody in your house right now? But you know what? Fuck your ass. Yeah, I had sex last night. You can make your own money. You can literally have your own job of your dreams. You can own your own house. You can own your own car. You can pay all your fucking own bills. So what is that man? That man has sex and a best friend, and that's it. I heard nothing but the truth. <laughs> I didn't make a single dollar today. Instead, I actually spent dollars. Oh, nice. What'd you spend it on? Um, we went and got lunch. And actually, if I'm being completely honest, I didn't spend a single dollar. <laughs> oh, there you go. You know what, though? I'm sure you you inherently spent money because yeah. somewhere somewhere out there you owe somebody something and they're cashing in on that shit because that's what Discover does to me. Every month they go, <gasps> you I just swear. spent extra money because of your interest. I swear. Surprise. No, literally. Actually, I did my taxes yesterday. Uh, last day. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> late as fuck. Good God. Living life on the edge. <laughs> it's okay. I know people who haven't even done their taxes yet. Uh, okay, they're just not going to do it? No, you got a five-day grace period. Okay. But I did them yesterday. Um, and then at the end, it like tells you like go to credit karma and whatever. And they, they, they see that I got credit card debt and that hurt. Yeah. Cause like between obviously that most debt that I have is my house and then it's my student loans and then it's my credit card. <laughs> yeah. Over my car. I've paid more on my car than I have on my credit card. Which is crazy. Cause like you've probably paid more on your credit card but because of the interest it doesn't reflect that not at all no yeah. because my car i bought my car for like twenty thousand dollars and it's now like 10 yeah and that's me telling you that i have more than ten thousand dollars in credit card debt everybody <laughs> 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 but honestly if you it's all interest well the only reason i don't is because i <laughs> moved it from one card to another so now <laughs> i have two cards that equal about 10 yes well yeah but that also like <laughs> that's smart because like the one doesn't have interest so you can actually pay it down yeah. and you're building credit still and mm -hmm. like that's smart once i defer my student loans now that i'm back in school that's the goal i'm gonna do the same thing yeah i'm gonna take i'm gonna like make double payments then so i'm gonna still try to be making the same amount of money mm -hmm. and what i would have spent for my student loans i'm gonna pay my credit card off so that way when i'm done with school I won't have any credit card debt. Yeah. All I will have is my house and then my student loans. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that people don't talk enough about, I think, is credit card debt and the reality of having it and the fact that, like, you know everybody and their fucking mom has it. And if you don't, then, like, you must be God's gift to personal finance. You have some. Like, I mean, I feel like people have... It just varies, like, how much you have or you don't have. But everybody, yeah. I think, has some. Well, I used to not my whole entire life because I would pay the entire amount Same. every time until I had one time where my car had one fucking problem. And I looked into my bank account and I said, ooh, no savings. Ooh, checking's not enough. Guess we got to put that on Daddy Discover. And ever since then, I've been paying the fucking phantom tax on that shit. <laughs> I know, literally. <laughs> literally, honestly. And that's the craziest part is that, like, like I, I have well paid off that amount. Yep. Yep. But it doesn't matter. It does not. It's like, what is yeah. it? 28% interest or something like that? That's what mine is, I think, on my Discord. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. 28% is wild every month. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um,. My like, I, I like it's hard because like the minimum payment that I'm making <laughs> isn't enough, and you have to do more than the minimum. But, oh yeah, yeah. But like that doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. No, because that's what I'm saying. Like you making the minimum payment is like covering the interest mm. that you're you're not. But it doesn't matter. It's almost like balancing out what you what's staying there yeah so you're essentially just paying the interest rate yeah so your debt's never gonna go down i know that's why i need to i need to transfer some debt to another card do the same thing that you're doing mm -hmm. and pay that off because i know that i can i know that i can pay it off if the interest wasn't a factor yeah because it's the interest that's killing me yeah but the issue is this is what i learned when i switched it so everybody this is what you need to know well yeah 
you, when you open a new credit card, your line of credit is not as big as the line of credit that you currently have. Correct. So you can't transfer all of it onto one card. So you should probably open like two. Yeah, no. So which I, I should have done. When I talked to my cousin about it, um, she opened up two cards. Yeah, I should have done that. And I did it that thinking. way. And then she <laughs> just paid like enough on each of them that like in within the year she could pay off mm-hmm. both of the cards because I know that I could pay off both of the cards in or the well, well if I move them to two cards in the year I need to do that I need to move the remainder to another card yeah that's interest free for at least a year yeah most and, of them are like 21 or 24 months right so yeah. you have two years interest free see that's what, exactly what I need to do so that by the time I'm out of school mm-hmm. I'm debt free on that end and well, then, and it's crazy because, like, I'm watching my other card that doesn't have the interest on it, and I'm paying, like, over the minimum. I'm paying, like, yeah. I'm trying to do $100 every two weeks to it, and it's crazy to watch, like, it actually subtract out. Yeah. And, like, you can see the path forward. I'm like, oh, my God, I can pay this off in no time. And yeah. then I'm like... Looking at my other card that still has like and it's the, going up, yeah. No, because the way that <laughs> I have like, I need to move this now. No, the, I know I need to do the same thing. As soon as I defer my student loans, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent going to be doing that because the fact that it just keeps going up and I don't even use it mm-hmm. at all. It's not even linked to anything anymore. No, it's crazy. Yeah, mine's linked to my Patreon that I subscribe to to my favorite podcast just to keep money being but it's five dollars a month so like other than that i don't ever put anything on it yeah but there has like the reason it got as high as it did was that one car payment and then i had to put one plane ticket on it Mm. yep that'll do it yep and that was like a steady close to seven thousand dollars yeah i um (laughs) yeah see the thing is mine is and before that i don't think i'd ever put more than like 800 bucks on that thing no (laughs) But my line of credit is so huge because I've had it since I was 18. No, my line of credit is going up because it's like, oh, because the problem with credit card companies is like they're like they just they don't keep match throwing your income. No, they also just keep throwing money at you. They're like, oh, you hit it because right. of your interest and everything else. Oh, we'll just extend it. No big deal. Yeah. And what's so crazy is like, why do I have a line of credit that is equal to half of my entire year salary? That shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Because in my head, because when you look at the spend thing, it's like, look how much money you could still keep spending on here. I'm like, you're right. I'm rich. And then it's like, no, if if you were dumb, if you were dumb, you would be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I actually. And then also doing my taxes yesterday, seeing how like little much like little money I made this year. I was like, "Hmm." but Mm. it feels so different because I have cash. (laughs) It's not real money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, So like when you do that, like this is probably the dumbest question of the century. But like when you get paid your actual paychecks are like a check that you can take to the bank, right? And your well, tips ha- are in cash yeah. or... No, so it depends on like where you work. Like downtown Nashville now is like turning to cards. So mm-hmm. like every single day, if you have cash tips, it's obviously different. You still get to take, take those. But like every single day, what they'll do downtown is like put it onto this either some places are cards or it's automatic direct deposit within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So like credit cards, there's like no money handed back and forth. The restaurant that I work at is so old school where you put all your tips in and then you, like it differs if I owe you or you owe me based off how much cash you either collected or didn't. Mm-hmm. And then so you leave with cash every single night. Mm. Um, since I am a manager, I have like a check with that mm. and I get paid for that um, separate. And then I also make cash tips. Gotcha. So like it's a little bit of both, but I like manage enough days. So that like goes into my um bank account and then that pays for like all my bills and then i try i'm trying to be really good and i'm not even putting it into my bank account because it's bad i would be bad if you yeah. my bank account bad so instead i have like an envelope now where i've been putting anything that i make in cash or like um we get like tipped out for something sometimes by like servers and like i'll put that aside mm. and i'm like using that to save yeah and i counted it today and i have a couple hundred dollars nice because i've been like i was like if i just put this aside yeah. it's gonna build up but like if it's in my bank account unfortunately it just gets spent and it's not even because i mean to it's just because it does right like this well sp- and also like the thing about like holding it in any sort of like savings account or whatever it's just like you're not you don't have enough money to be like making true good interest on right. it anyway so it's not like it's doing it's not like you're losing money by keeping it like in a under your mattress type situation instead yeah. of like in a bank 
Right. And also I think it's just like better because I don't I like keep forgetting that I have it there. Well, a lot of people do that with the fucking like uh binder finance right. situation. Like they transfer all of their checks to cash and then hold actual physical dollars because it keeps them from spending. Yeah. And it's like a way that a lot of people have like started to budget. Right. Because well, it makes it real. Exactly. Well, that's kind of the sense essentially mm-hmm. what I'm doing because also like, I really just want to go on vacation like a relaxing vacation that's not me going to see my parents in Pennsylvania which like love you and I love doing that's it that's not a vacation though like but let's be not honest vacation yeah. like and then like when you go home you have to see friends you do this you do that and it's like tiring and like I absolutely love going there but like, I want to go put my fucking feet in the sand mm-hmm. I want to go snorkeling with turtles toes in the water ass in the sand Zach Brown said it best not a baby. worry what a worry not a worry in the world, but a cold beer in my hand. Cold fucking. Won't have a beer. Liquid death in my hand. Yeah, just a cold <laughs> something. Cold Topo Chico with lime. Yeah, no, because I'm that probably going to go. delicious Because right I'm probably going to be going somewhere like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Topo Chico Central, 100%. Actually, I already know where I'm going and I already have a plan. I'm not even going to nice. lie. Nice. But we could talk about that yeah, if we want. Yeah, where you want to go? I'm going to Belize. Oh, okay. And That's uh like... um caribbean mexico kind of but it's so they actually speak english is it across from cancun it's right it's attached to guatemala okay if i'm so i just like did a lot of research the other day i know so many people have been there i've just never been um so it's not on the caribbean sea then um, it's on the pacific ocean it's a part it's technically the caribbean sea because it's right here Mm, gotcha this is the caribbean but i didn't want to go to an all-inclusive resort i don't want to go i I, i'm not about them i don't think that they're fun and then the hard part is like to go to mexico like and not stay in an all-inclusive it's just not safe so like yeah unless you stay at like a really nice resort but then it's so expensive (laughs) right exactly so there's like give and take to it and like i mean you could go to like uh costa rica is like another place to like be able to do something like this too um but honestly, from here, Costa Rica's got those bugs, though. I know. From here they're to Belize, it's only five hour flight. Yeah. And you could fly Southwest, which I'm not because it doesn't like coincide with my whatever, but like for free baggage and shit like mm. that. And it's only two thirty nine. Oh, nice. Round trip. Yeah, that's not bad at all. No, not. I couldn't even fly to Philadelphia for that. Yeah, I was about half to say, time. that's like what I would fly home on like a really really discounted rate right that's what i'm saying like that's like a good price for me to fly yeah, home yeah. like i typically spend around like three to four at this point to get to philly i think so, the last time i flew home and i didn't take that stupid fucking allegiant flight that fucking sucks uh, it was like 500 bucks yeah on american right to to do essentially what would have been an eight hour drive right so i was like I'm never doing that again. No. I don't know how much more my car, my poor little car can take that drive. I know. But also like, I just weigh it out. Like I've gotten to the point where like, if I can find flights that are cheaper than what I pay in gas. And I think about it as I would spend about a hundred dollars per way. Right. Cause it's 12 hours to drive. Yeah. So I think about it as that. So if I can find something that's closer to $200, mm-hmm. it's worth it for me to yeah fly. Yeah, I agree. And also my thing too is like if I have a connecting flight, I'm never going to do the flight over the drive because it ends up being the same amount of time right. as I could have just driven. Right. Home. So as even I don't like to connect anymore because every time I have it's just been a, a whole mess. But you have to connect to go to Belize. You have to go to Houston or you have to go to Miami. Yeah, that makes and sense. And then go. But it's only a five hours even with the connection. Mm-hmm. So it's really not bad. Yeah. So I was like, okay, perfect. Because I was like I would like to go to Greece. Like, that's really what in my brain I was like, I want to go there. Yeah, that's a hard, that the flight of that is hard. It's 12 like, hours. Once you're there, it's not bad, like, expense-wise, but, like, getting there is just, like, well, it's so, A, hard, and B, the yeah, expense. Right, it's $1,200 to, like, minimum to fly, because also, even though Nashville is, like, turning into an international airport, it's, it's not. not a hub yet. Like, yeah, no. It's also not a place where, like, you still have to go to, like, a coast to get onto a plane. Cause like it's going to take yeah. you two and a half hours to even get to New York city. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to stop there and then you're going to fly from there. So right. like, it's just kind of like a, like union laws. The pilot's not going to be doing that one. It, yeah, exactly. Like you, you just can't. So regardless, annoying. So it's like, okay, that's just like in a whole day, that's going to take up one entire day just to get there, let alone get home. So that mm-hmm. was two days wasted essentially. doesn't include like traveling, whatever. So I was like, okay, where else could I go? And I started talking to this girl and girl I work with. And she said about, um, 
she's like, I don't have a friend who like when I lived in Chattanooga, he was used to go to this place called it's she's like, I really don't know. It started with a B. And I said, mm-hmm. the Bahamas. And yeah. She's like, no. And I was like, good. Because that's what I was thinking. And she said Belize. And I said, oh, OK. And I looked it up and I was like, I'm going. They speak English. Yeah. Like they, there's so there's it's no a, uh, European owned country. Is it not? I think possibly. it's a British territory. But I could have made that up. It, but they, I thought it I thought something like that. But it's not like they speak English. Like that's their first language. So there's going to be like no language barrier. Yeah. Which maybe that sounds like terrible, but like there's a part of it that's like a beauty to it. And no matter what you, what language you speak, like going to yeah. a, a place that also speaks your language helps no, so much. Um, that's one of the main reasons why, like, I mean, besides the money of it all, like I haven't traveled to like Asia yet because mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to be at least like a little bit, and un- un- have an understanding of the language of the country that i'm trying to visit right. because if not like i'm gonna have a the hardest time just getting around and b like i don't feel like i'm gonna like enjoy the trip as much as i could because you wouldn't get as much out of it no yeah, yeah like because like i want to like be respectful of like the culture and like also like be able to enjoy myself and not feel like i have to do all the tourist shit because that's the only place that speak english right that's so true like staying only in the touristy areas yeah. so they're gonna have, like english menus and yeah, english, yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and i mean i'm sure that like there will be some places off like the beaten path that do but like majority yeah. no without like a guide or somebody yeah to help yeah, yeah you. exactly no i would 100 percent agree to that because like, i don't even know spanish well enough yeah to like order a full meal i know enough to like be respectful yeah and, like I know like some keywords, especially like working in a restaurant, like I know like some mm-hmm. words, but like not to the capacity that yeah. like I can if I have to like because I started taking Spanish like when I was really little because we used to go to Mexico all the time. Um, and my mom's best friend was a Spanish teacher or is a Spanish teacher. And so like me and my little brother started learning Spanish like as we were learning to speak like we were learning we were taking Spanish classes. And so like something like instinctually will kick in if i'm in a scenario where it's like you have to speak it but that's so rare because in america that like is never really a thing yeah but when we were in mexico like even when that lifeguard came up to us and he spoke no english and he was like telling us like we couldn't be on the beach like i don't know what turned on in my brain but i was like having a conversation with him yeah and i was like okay i haven't done that in forever nine years right yeah. it was enough to like get by yeah but yeah no i know so anyway that's why i was like okay this is cool yeah and then i started like watching tiktoks and like something about me like i love planning travel with things like I don't like, I, I get like, overwhelmed like I don't I just like I'll start and then I start looking at hotels and I'm like I don't no, know anything that's about the this absolute I can't last thing you have to do yeah. so like now with like TikTok and stuff like just like fun to like be able to like see videos and be like oh, okay like these are like things that would like be offered in the area mm-hmm. whatever and then like from there sometimes you can find a blogger that's like really into the country or somebody who's like been in America their whole life and then have moved there and like you can kind of like follow yeah. them and then from there like I like to look read over like personal blogs and stuff like that and to see where like the best places to stay are not even like hotels just like areas yeah and then like things to do in that area and like should you split your time between two different places or not or is like so specifically for Belize, I have like mainland, which is like uh, rainforest mostly. And yeah. then they have like two main islands. There's like 400 different islands, but like the two main islands that you would like go to. Mm-hmm. And one is more like reserved, relaxing, like more for couples and single people. And like they have like, you know, clubs and all that stuff too. But like it's more like laid back and then the other one is more like family oriented like all the like hustle and bustle of like to bring a kid with you Mm. and i was like absolutely not i'm not going to that one yeah so like i just like i don't know trying to like figure that out but they're only a 30 minute boat right away from each other like yeah it's so you can still do both but i don't know i just like i love looking into that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and just like really researching it and like being a part of it so i decided i'm gonna go there in november nice and i already found airbnb i'm gonna go hang out because I was like, I just want to have something to look forward to as well. Yeah. And like, honestly, it's it wasn't that expensive. Like, mm-hmm. we're here. We're living. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. No, that sounds awesome. I'm wanting to go on a trip with my mom for our birthdays in October to New York. And like, it's my task to kind of plan all that. And I just like, it's so overwhelming for me. And like, I have friends who live in the city, too that I could easily just like hit up and like ask like just 
where should we stay because like i also like i've been to new york so much that i don't want to do the things i've always done so like i really want to do more i thought you were like just decide what part you'd want to like explore the most well and that's what's it. hard because like uh, like my mom hasn't seen manhattan the way that i've seen manhattan so it's like i don't want to just be like we're not gonna do that right but also don't think that because the thing about Manhattan is you can literally take a subway to any part of it, right? I know. So, like, I feel like you'd stay and you're going to take the subway to all different parts of it the entire time you're there because that's just how Manhattan yeah. works, right? So, like, I feel like you stay in a place like, I don't know, say you pick, like, Chelsea mm -hmm. to stay in or even if you want to be, like, in Brooklyn or whatever. Yeah. Like, you pick it to stay there because there's, like, a couple of restaurants, boutiques or something that you want to do. Yeah. Like, you're still going to be able to subway into wherever. Yeah. And be, like, able to experience it also one knowing your mom and knowing like because she is a mom mm -hmm. she just wants to be with you the whole time she yeah. don't care what you guys do if she experienced yeah. manhattan the correct way the not the correct way like she don't yeah, care you know she's just gonna go wherever you go yeah but it's also like i don't know like i don't know it's just like the cost of everything too is just so outrageous for no reason like hotels and stuff is like 450 dollars a night for like an average ass hotel and so then i'm looking at airbnbs but then like it's kind of the same story with all that so i'm like i just don't even like i'm overwhelmed right now and i'm like i don't i can't book anything because i'm like i i don't have that money right now to do no that. i'd agree <laughs> well honestly the only reason so on airbnb you can like pay half of it now and then half of it later mm. and this was only like a hundred and I want to say like 30 something dollars a night. Yeah. Like the place that I found. And like, so I paid for half of it now. So I was like, okay, now you're committed. Mm -hmm. And that was like $600 or yeah. whatever. And then like, I pay the next $600 like the month that I go. So I was yeah. like, okay, now I have time to like put that away. And yeah, like, it'll yeah, be fine exactly. and whatever. So I mean, you could always do something like that too. If you Airbnb. Yeah. So at least you don't have to like, it's not like one lump sum like a hotel would mm -hmm. be. Because the hotel is either like you pay it all now or you pay it all later. Yeah. It's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I just haven't done enough planning to even know, like, <laughs> what week we would go or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. there's just so many logistical things that I haven't done because I don't like doing that. Like, mm. I'm not a, I'm not a trip planner person. I'm like, um, I like to travel and I like to go places and I like to do all the stuff and I'm fine with, like, doing all of that planning but i don't i get like so overwhelmed with like the hotel situation and mm. the stay like i don't like to plan that part of it see i think that's I the fun part once i've decided but it's not fun if you that's the point that you start at yeah it's only fun if you've like again like research the area know where you want to go kind of know where you want to be at mm -hmm. because then it's like okay like now you're like excited about yeah. that location um and it was actually fun because like this time planning and like looking because i've done this a lot because i really enjoy this stuff and like my sister and her husband like i've planned so many things for them like my parents are going to um scotland mm. in june and like i planned that for them yeah like, i just love it but this blog that i found for this specific one it was like these two sisters who travel oh that's so cool and so like that was also fun because it was like girly things yeah. and like more like whatever but a part of their blog was that they make playlists to go along with the oh, vibe of the cool. place that you're going so i'm not even gonna lie i was like playing this playlist and i was like so excited i was like don't even know any of these songs yeah whatever but it was still like oh this is this is it like this is so fun it was like hyping me up to yeah. like really be a part of it and like so i don't know maybe you also need that maybe you need to like find like a little new york playlist a little hype <laughs> about it start researching listens to jennifer lopez nonstop. <laughs> jenny I mean, from the block i mean maybe it'll get you excited no, i I'm swear um yeah no that's how i was like the last time when we went to Cabo, I listened to like reggaeton for like a month straight before we left. Absolutely. Because I was like, I just need to get in that like vibe. Yeah. I need to get with the culture. Yeah. Be a part of. Yeah. I was listening to Bad Bunny like it was my job. <laughs> <laughs> and then we didn't go to a single club. So like it's not that that was the, that was not the well, I think my dad played Kenny Chesney well, the majority of the time. <laughs> well, he sure did. What's funny about this is actually talking about uh, Cabo is that the other day I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw that one of the girls, um, Francesco from Chicks in the Office, was staying at the exact <laughs> like villa that we stayed at with yeah. your parents. And I was like, 
this shelving looks familiar. Yeah. And then I was like, that pot looks familiar. And then I was like, I didn't even think about where they were, but I was like, why does this like look yeah. and feel familiar? And I was like, oh my God, they're yeah. in Cabo. <laughs> Isn't that so weird? Like when you sent me that, I was like, oh my God. Cause at first I thought it was just random girls. Yeah. Like at first I thought it was like people that you knew that you were like friends with. I was like, oh crazy. And then when I saw that it was like the girls from the chicks in the office, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. Why did they not say like the one hotel, like Thompson? Like why are they saying at this? <laughs> resort yeah. not to knock your parents no for but up, i think like, it was probably just because like it's so big like so that true. house was so big like there's so many beds and so like it makes sense for like the cost of it to like yeah. divvy it up between that many people because like if you had that many people staying at that place it'd be so cheap and you have Absolutely. your own pool and like you have like those other places you can go to so i feel like it makes sense like bang for your buck. but then i was thinking i was like was it the exact same one because they even had the blue couches I think they all literally look like that. Okay, they're like copy paste. Yeah. I wasn't sure if like, because some of them I knew were like owned by if people. If it was the exact same one, that's crazy. And I wonder if that cat is still alive. <laughs> oh my gosh, queso. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was actually um, talking about this the other day because I was like, that's like the last vacation we like I yeah, went on. Yeah, me too. But like, because it was more like resort style. Mm -hmm. And like, that's. It was fun and was definitely needed, but I like to explore. Yeah. And like, I was like, I'm excited to do that mm -hmm. here. No, totally. But I don't know. No, that'll be fun. I've never been to Belize, but I know so many people who have been there. Really? A lot of my friends, like from high school, like that's where their families like vacationed at. Oh, well, it makes there. sense because it's cheap and yeah. like it's a it's a short flight without being like the Bahamas and like even their all inclusives that I was like realizing because it's also safer like you mm. can leave your all inclusive resort yeah still and go do things in the city and like walk around and like go um like snorkeling and go zip lining and do all the yeah, things yeah I think like, it's like a totally like tourist place um like their most of their revenue is that oh yeah it's all tourism yeah. like a lot of the people who own airbnbs like they want to be your tour guide as well right because like they don't really have like i don't want to say that they don't have jobs because like they do yeah. but like that's yes because like, they're all on island time it's like jamaica yeah like, or they've like retired to do that exactly yeah um i was like the people that we got the airbnb from are like american mm -hmm. and they just like own it down there and it's like a little like bungalow house it's really freaking cute but yeah um, there's so many people who have done that in cabo because like they either like live in california or they live just like somewhere in america and like retired and they live in cabo now full time but then they bought like a second house that's how this is and like, they these, just like rent like, that this out. family like they own the actual house and then they have like a almost like a like mother-in-law suite or whatever mm -hmm. and it has it's just like a cute little kitchenette it's a one bedroom it's almost like a studio apartment yeah that's kind of what it's like and they decorated it so freaking cute and then there's like a pool and they have like bikes and kayaks and like all that like a yeah. part of it which is cool but yeah on the other island it's like they're um they have like all-inclusive resorts so you can like be at but then also you can go and like be around and within so i was like i was thinking about that too but i was like that's just so expensive to just never be at the all-inclusive and plus i'm not right. eating their food i feel like all-inclusive food is just shit it's like cruise ship food well i've yeah. never been on a cruise ship but Me it's, either. it's what i'm assuming would be cruise ship food yeah where it's very like school lunch where it's like everything's the same every single day you have like like even when you have different options it all tastes the same yeah you know i was talking about this the other day with my roommate because we were driving we were talking about how like we're not really eating out anymore because we've been on our gym grind and we've just been cooking at home saving money like whatever and we passed a taco bell and i looked over and i was like you know that's something that i like once i stopped drinking i'm like that shit is bad and like not to hate on taco bell but Every single item on that entire menu tastes the same. I'd agree to that. No I, matter what you get, it, it has tastes that the same, same base note. Yeah, no, like, it's, it's it like the beef. The <laughs> like the beef that they use, like all the same. The beef and the tortilla, like yeah. the, it literally, like it, it literally tastes exactly. I same. won't lie. Talk about one a.m. when well, you're starving after work. That's what. Hits. That's what I'm saying. Like it's like desperation food. Yeah. It's like high, drunk, or like nothing else is open, and mm -hmm. I haven't eaten today. I know. The other day we ate. Um, cookout okay Ugh. let me tell you about fucking desperation food cookout is the place that you go because either you've grown up in the southeast and like cookout is very just like your comfort mm -hmm. fast food place or you 
go there because it's the only thing open. But that place is so fucking overwhelming. Their menu I know. is way too big. I'm not even gonna lie. No as I was reason. driving there, so I was driving there to get us food because I didn't work, and I was going there to get food. And on the way there, I don't recommend you be on your phone and driving. But I was looking at that menu because mm-hmm. I was so nervous. I was like, I have 13 minutes to get there. Also, God like, forbid you want a fucking milkshake. Jesus it's Christ. so overwhelming. <laughs> There's so many options. It's so overwhelming. Even like getting a fucking chicken wrap was yeah. like six options. Also, McDonald's wants to act like having their ice cream machine is like the hardest thing in the world. Try working at Cookout for one day and making 17 million different combos also, of shakes. Also, That's crazy. I need McDonald's to bring back snack wraps because I love those Who things. just made a commercial that I saw is essentially making a snack wrap, but it's a restaurant I would never eat at? Arby's. That's the only reason I wanted to go to cookout was because I wanted like a wrap and I didn't want to eat like a McChicken or a fucking hamburger. Like yeah. I, I wanted like a chicken wrap. Mm-hmm. So that's the only reason that I went there. But I don't know, dude. I need the I need McDonald's to bring back their crispy chicken Ranch snack wraps, because let me tell you, that's a hit. It does hit, and you know it doesn't hit? A quesadilla from fucking cookout. No. That shit is floppy. It's not good. It's I like, literally thought it, I forgot the chicken quesadilla, because you he know, loves chicken quesadillas. Yeah, it, and it reminds me of the kind of quesadilla that you would make when you lived in a dorm room, and you only had a microwave, and so oh, like, yeah, you, like, throw you it just in there. had to heat it up in the microwave, so it's like <laughs> floppy and wet and mushy, and if you don't eat it fast enough, it turns into like a rock. Because yeah, it got it got heated way too fast, way too hot. That was the vibe when I took out my snack wrap that I got from there. Yeah, but I need I need McDonald's bring them back because also in Europe they still have the snack wraps, but they have them in like jumbo size. Like you know how ours were like two biters, which like yeah, because they were like on the dollar menu. Yeah, right? But I also appreciated those because like I like like sometimes like at night like it was light enough for like I didn't feel like a piece of shit after for mm. eating McDonald's, but it was like enough to be like. A little snack like it was yeah. perfect or if you wanted to like add two right it's like you had that option and it was only another dollar or whatever. exactly well in europe they have like big ones and they have like all oh. different kinds and i remember when i lived there we would go like every country had like different ones like different saucy whatever. isn't that just like the most <sighs> american capitalistic thing you can ever think of it's like you go to a different country but like i'm going to the mcdonald's there so actually like i'm be- gonna hit it up to see what it's what so we made about. it a thing <laughs> we made it a thing that every single country that we traveled to we had to go to mcdonald's everybody because, does because mcdonald's are different in every country well i know and that's what i'm fun. saying it's like you have to see what they're talking about exactly there. and it's so good mm-hmm. i'm not even gonna lie it's so good i definitely like i was not my healthiest when i lived there and i'm not saying that mcdonald's is healthy at all because it's literally not but that's all i lived off of yeah. because also it was the budget we were on yeah would it be wrong of me to say like when i watched Super Size me in high school like i it made me starving and i wanted mcdonald's so bad <laughs> And everybody was like, ew, I'm never doing that. And I'm like, um, I'm leaving right the second to get a large fry and a large Diet Coke. And I wish they still had the Super Size option. Are you kidding me? Uh, I'm super Size Diet don't. Coke? I wish. Uh, you wouldn't drink it all. Oh, Honey, I could put down giant. I Diet need Coke. to be better. I need to be better about my soda intake because... I've stopped drinking it. It's been weeks what well, problem is like i either, i don't buy it anymore i either have <laughs> well my problem is it's at work yeah so that's what i was gonna say like when i go into the office we have diet cokes in our fridge so i always drink one when i'm at the office but because i don't have them at home it's yeah i'm not drinking it. well i've got but to i'm point drinking where, club soda like a fiend <laughs> i've gotten to a point where i'm either drinking a diet coke or i'm drinking a coffee but like that like some sort of like mm, caffeine stimulant like, yeah yeah as like if i don't have it my i get a headache so I'm kind of yeah, one. but that's I've been kind trying, of how I am with like the energy meal. I've been right trying now. to be better though, and just have coffee because the creamer that I've been using is like a mushroom based. Mm. So like, there's you know, I've been trying to be better about that because coffee is way better for you than than diet coke. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I've also been learning about like what alcohol and soft drinks do to your but like to your bones mm-hmm. and your blood and your insides and all the things. Yeah, and it's quite terrifying. Hmm. Yeah, I. I don't want to hear about how bad soda is for me, but I will hop on the like alcohol is bad for you train. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of has similar effects. I'm yeah. not even gonna lie. I'm sure. Um, but also, yeah, no, I've just been learning about those things in school, and I'm like, this is cool, but also like terrified that I'm just never gonna eat or drink anything the rest of my life. Yeah, because like, I mean, in disease, like, and nutrition when they go hand in hand, um, is that like. 
you would think like, oh, broccoli is really good for you because blah, 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 blah. But like if you have a certain disease, like broccoli might not be good for you. Yeah. So then it's like, what do you eat? Mm-hmm. Not broccoli. Because like, what if, you know? Yeah. That's where my brain is at right now. And it's kind of. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's also like, I mean, the way that our world is too and like the health of our planet and the way things are farmed. You could even be eating like the most healthiest food mm-hmm. in the world. You're still consuming microplastics. You're yeah. still being exposed to like pesticides or whatever. You like really low just, key. Like so I mean You really just have to do the best you can and that's what, like I'm learning yeah. in this too, is that like nobody's perfect. Even no, the people who are perfect, like, are still doing stuff. And it's also about all about like um moderation. And mm-hmm. like truly it really, really is about moderation. Yeah. Cause like you can still eat cookies and brownies and sweets and like i literally eat sweets every single day yeah me too that's one thing that like i won't give up yeah but it's i it's i have good self-control with it like i was gonna say i'm not eating it the way that like when i was in college like i was like me and my roommate fucking hated the food on campus it was so gross it was so disgusting and like the dining hall food was just like oh my god i couldn't do it so the only thing we consumed was the desserts because like they were bussing and yeah, our, we our pants were busting at the seams as well because like the all we ate was sugar and we were like sick all the time. Yeah, my acne was crazy. Yeah, I had like the worst fucking like like you probably felt lethargic. Swollen. Like yeah. yeah, like I was tired Didn't all sleep. the time. Oh my god, no, girl! Like all I was consuming for like probably like two months was like dessert and chick-fil-a whenever i was like realized i hadn't had protein in like four days mm. yeah it was so bad i feel like i'm always feeding for more protein i don't know something oh my god i made baby back ribs the other day i saw you did that i made ribs that was the first time i'd ever made ribs before number one um the thing about like barbecuing stuff is like i feel like men gatekeep girl boss that hobby that is not a hard thing to do. No. So don't be intimidated by a big piece of meat. It's the easiest. It's like cro- it's giving crock pot for boys. Like barbecue <laughs> is literally crock pot for boys. Like it's the same exact tactic. You season it. You wrap it up and you walk away. Like that's yeah. all you do. Well, That's the only way that I cook. Yeah. It's that's it. so easy. And literally like I was like freaking out that I was going to like fuck something up. And it's like it's nearly impossible Unless you just cook it too long. Yeah. So like, I don't know. But that was the first time I had made baby back ribs. The only part about it that like, if you don't do well with like meat handling it is you have to rip off what's called like the silver back or like the membrane that connects like it's on the ba- on the bone side of the ribs. You have to like, <laughs> it's kind of vulgar. Like the way that I was like, I'm glad my roommate wasn't there because she does not do good with like blood or like stuff like that then not that there's blood but like you literally have to like wiggle your finger like between like this tiny membrane and the bone and like rip it off and it makes this crazy like cartoon like bone breaking sound effect where it's like like scary sounds that's the only part that's kind of gross other than that like it's not i'd agree because i even agree like when i'm like touching chicken and like cutting the fat and stuff off none of that bothers me but I was exposed to that super young because I mean, I'm going to do it because I need to eat like, but. yeah, but there's some people who just like won't eat meat because of like the handling part of it, which no. like I can't understand. But at the same time, like, no, I, you I will not catch understand. me ever handling something that I have to pull organs out of or like, oh, oh no, get out of here with that. Or if I see an <laughs> eyeball, if I see an really? eyeball, I'm out. Okay. Yeah, I see. I none of that bothers me, but I'm also like the person who's like, you could have like a fucking like, your leg could be holding on by just like tendons because it just got chopped off, and it really wouldn't bother me at all. Like something about blood and guts. And I feel like I'm about to get over none it. None of that bothers me. I feel like I'm about to get over it yeah. real quick. Once I'm in school, and yeah. Like, well, once I'm in school now, but once I'm in clinical is when I'm like actually in the hospital and have to see like. Like, we had to, like, look at pictures the other day of, like, ulcers and, like, foot, like, mm-hmm. wounds and, like, all oh, these see, things. Oh, see, I love looking and, at like, that stuff. Okay, but, like, looking at it online, I was like, okay, I was getting more comfortable with mm-hmm. it, right? I was like, well, when I see this in person, I don't know how it's going to Well, because the stench is going to be there. Well, don't tell me that. 
<laughs> that's like all my friends who have like done any form of like nursing or whatever. It's like it's all fun and games and those pimple popping videos are great and then you smell it and it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like at some point though you kind of just like No, you, it, you get too. numb to it. Yeah, yeah, totally. But um yeah, that's one thing that I think would be would make it a bit more real is like like smelling because i love watching those toe videos where they have an ingrown toenail and they like dig it out and you know they do all that cleaning and i'm like i bet that reeks probably like really bad probably yeah so i don't know not yeah nothing really grosses me out but what does gross me out is um like human like bodily yeah you hate movements like I don't know why. Like, I cannot stand, like, farting, burping. Like, those noise. I, I think it's more the noise. Like, I hate that. It's because you grew up with boys. I think so. It's like a trauma response for me. I'm like, Ugh! because, like, that was always their, like, fear tactic for me. It's mm. like, it would be like, run in my room, fart, run away. Or, like, literally, like, walk up into your face, shadow box you, and then burp, and then be like, <laughs> and then sprint away. And it's like, oh, my God. It's like, <sighs> I'm scared. Ah, uh, see, like, I mean, I guess I grew up with a sister, so it didn't really bother me at all. I mm-hmm. was the one who was farting, if anything. <laughs> like, no, they were ripping ass like crazy, and then they would say stupid shit like, oh, looks like I stepped on a spider. It's like, that doesn't even make sense. No, yeah. Oh, where are the ducks? Yeah. I hate that one. Yeah. Or my dad would pee off the back of our boat. <laughs> this is so <laughs> fucking, like... Looking back, I'm like, that is wild. You did this and dick like out for the rest of the world to see. Yeah, like it, broad daylight. He's just turned. I know, facing yeah. backwards, pissing off the back of our boat. And I have friends on the boat. Like, there's like you know people around. And then he's like, he's like, oh, I'm letting the <laughs> what's it fucking called when you have to let the water out of your boat? Draining so the like, hose. Something like that. No, he would say like he's um. God, I can't think of the terminology, but it's like when you have a boat, it collects water as you drive. Yeah. So you have to like let it out so it like resurfaces or whatever. So he's like saying he was doing that. It's like he's just pissing off the back of the boat. And I'm like, men are so gross. <laughs> and I think that's they what it, and they it truly really enjoy is. an outside pee. <clears throat> they really do. Any chance that they can whip their dick out in public, they're down for it. I mean, yeah, I it was actually funny. So I was sitting at, um, God, I keep wanting to say his name and I can't because mm. it's whatever. If you say it, I'll just blur it okay. out. Okay. I was sitting at his house today um, and I was on his balcony because he lives in an apartment complex and it was so beautiful out. And like there's people down at the pool and like whatever, but like I had to do schoolwork so I couldn't go down there to like six. I wouldn't have been able to see my yeah. screen. And every part of me just like wanted to have my tits out. <laughs> like I just was like I just feel like it'd be so comfy yeah. if like, sitting here tits out whatever but like there's just too many people around yeah and, like, he lives his apartment faces inside of the circle of mm. apartments so someone would see my boobs yeah and I couldn't do that but I feel like something about it just like felt freeing and it wasn't about because I was outside mm. it just was like oh just like letting your boobs hang kind of feel good yeah see so I get that I don't know like the thing is like I've just never had that desire to just like not be clothed oh I love but I, I really oh, I'd rather be naked well i really think that comes hand in hand with having brothers because like literally i never once have ever like in my house like even like walking down like i would sleep with just underwear and a t-shirt but every time even just waking up i would put pants on to go downstairs to like get Mm. a water in the morning see yeah but then my brother would walk around in like fucking tidy whities and no shirt on like no he didn't wear tidy whities but like boxer briefs or whatever yeah like that's that's so funny captain underpants (laughs) and this bitch like coming downstairs like a full ass adult that's crazy no but like like they would walk around just in like no hardly any clothes but for me it was just like i don't know oh i was you know what i mean like it's just so weird it's so So weird the thing is as I got older and like my sister got older too, like we would just wear big t shirts mm-hmm. and underwear and no pants. Yeah. And that was even like if my dad was home. Yeah. Like that's just how we walked around. Now, if nobody else was there, my sister and I were butt ass naked. Yeah, see, no, that would never happen. And then that. my like, mom does that though. And that's what's crazy is like my mom, multiple times, like, God love her. <laughs> she's a cooch out bitch. Like, she goes commando, <laughs> or I don't know if she still does. She did for a really long time, would be commando all the time. And <laughs> this is so fucking gross. And I love you. And I'm sorry I'm telling the world this, but like, multiple times we'd be like outside at the pool and she'd be like had taken her shower but i'd still be in the pool and like you could like look up and see her whole coochie because she'd be sitting in a chair but we'd be in the pool she's up here her 
crotch is just <laughs> open no underwear See, letting her breathe my mom my mom's also a commando type girl yeah and when she wore skirts there'd be times i'd be like girl yeah. what are you doing <laughs> But it must be that generation. Something in that generation too is like got this like idea in their head that their vagina must breathe, like must be like out of underwear for like x amount of time. Oh, I feel the like day. it definitely should. I know, but like it was like something was like force fed that. No, down I definitely think it should. Like if I'm home alone, like I'll like I'll put a robe on. Like that's yeah. like the max I'm gonna put on. Yeah, but like no underwear. I'm gonna mm. let I'm gonna let everything just go. Yeah, I love it. I'm just like yeah. I'm just the other not day I was girl painting naked in my house wow and then he walked in and he was like this is what we're doing mm. i said uh do i pay the mortgage yeah and he said yeah and i said then you're gonna shut the hell up yeah absolutely <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> why would i paint in clothing get the paint on the clothing i thought he was saying like this is what we're doing like it's like set up like for a porno like you guys i are mean about kind to get of it, get kind of it. but i was like don't yeah like, no, I'm not getting paint on my. I'm not getting yeah. paint on clothing. I can just get paint myself. Go take a shower. Yeah. But yeah, he walked in. He was like, "Oh, this is what we're doing." Now? Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Yeah, but I'm actually painting." Yeah. This isn't going anywhere, but the painting needs to get done. Yeah. So. See, I'm yeah, I'm not that person at all. Like I am. I don't even go barefoot at my house. Like I have socks on all the time. <laughs> Emily. like i'm just i didn't know not, you were so modest <laughs> no i i don't know i i i truly am i'm a very modest gal when it comes to my when it comes to my own home apparently i guess i'm always oh. because my my version of like comfy clothes is like giant clothes so it's like huge I mean, sweatpants same. big shirt big sweatshirt like i like to feel like cozy but when i'm naked but also okay here's this also might be a difference my house is freakishly cold all the time so, like, if I was naked in that bitch, I'd be shivering goosebumps. Yeah, but the best thing ever like, is to be, the best thing ever is for your house to be cold and then be naked and get under a cover. Like, that feels so good. Oh, no, so I hate that good. feeling. I don't like that feeling. No, I that think feels it's amazing. Like, I think it kind of goes back to that, like, slight autistic thing. I don't like that feeling on my body. Oh, I love like, it. Like, even when I, like, hook up with people, I have to put underwear and a shirt on afterwards like to sleep that night no i 100 like, will put underwear i can't on. sleep naked i'm a, after sex i will say like if i'm just hanging out i don't have to have underwear on if i am going to sleep i do like to have underwear on because i just feel like when you're sleeping like sometimes it's like you know also what I'm like, <laughs> i watched this tiktok and this lady i don't about farting and getting yeah. food particles in your sheets. <laughs> i know i saw it too <laughs> and i guess what i said i must say naked <laughs> But you know the amount of times I've just ripped ass? Like, there's no way that shit isn't, like, coming out somewhere. No, I know. Like, it's not like it's getting... It's not like my thin ass fucking shitty underwear is holding back the, like... Anything. Yeah, no. E. coli or whatever that It might hold back, is. like, 1%. Also, what? Like, my fucking G-string thong? Like, yeah. that's not... It's, like, it's just cutting the air at that point. It's no, not, yeah, like, it's holding still coming it back. In. No, I know. Like... <laughs> as I'd just be wearing a thong to bed. Yeah, I don't wear a That's thong it. to sleep, but especially after I like, wear crazy grandma underwear. <laughs> like, is no. the least sexy thing you you've ever funny? seen in your life. So they look ginormous. So the like this was like the first time I did this the other day because I was like getting my period, mm-hmm. but like we just like had sex and like whatever. And like afterwards, like I always have to have underwear on after sex. Cause I just feel like you have like weird. Like, well, you keep you keep discharging yeah. or at the very least like like it comes in waves a bit yeah. afterwards so like if you don't it just kind of is it's like gets on your everywhere. yeah no so i 100 percent always put underwear on yeah. after but the other day i was like i'm getting my period i kind of feel like you know i wanted some like big girl underwear you know what i'm saying and i just was like um you're going to bed right <laughs> he was like yeah and i was like okay bet because i like put on like my biggest calvin klein like underwear and i just was like oh this is comfy because I didn't want anything up my ass. Yeah. And that sounded crazy for me to say, but I didn't want a thong on. And then I was like, this is embarrassing. I think like this is a whole other level of a relationship to like bring out like your granny panties like that to just be like, <laughs> see, here I am. But this is the difference between you but and I'm I. Naked with granny panties on. This is the difference between you and I with like, just like the comfortability nakedness thing. I whip out my fucking most embarrassing grandma underwear regardless. Like, it could be a one-night stand and I'm putting those things on. <laughs> like, I keep that shit on me. Like, it's giving saggy butt. It's giving poopy diaper. It's giving, <laughs> like, oversized to the gods. Like, I don't care. I'm wearing it. It's no. so comfortable. And the thing is, they're so huge that they come up past my belly button. And I literally have done that with people. I don't even remember their names. 
like Emily, hook up one night stand. I've only been okay. This is like we're like four months into this. I and give I you like, like I give you the most crazy sloppy top you've had in your life, and then I would be looking like Captain Underpants to sleep in. Thank you very much. <laughs> like I'm sorry. Like that's just how it's gonna go. I love that. And at the end of the day, I'm comfortable, and that's all that matters. Because like the yeah. thing is, it's like I'm sexy when I need to be. And the moment I'm not feeling it anymore, I'm going back into where I feel the most comfortable. And that is in my grandma underwear. I love that for you. I love the confidence of that. I mean, like, yeah. I I don't know, because even the other day I was just like, mm, will you find me unattractive? But he was just like, no, I don't give a fuck. No, I'm because the men are simple creatures at the end of the day and ass is an ass regardless of of what you got on top of it you know yeah. what i mean even though i was like laying down because i was of course naked in my bed and, like, mm-hmm. laying there and i was actually doing schoolwork tits out doing schoolwork he woke up and he was he, like turned over and he was like playing with my boob and i was like see don't do this because like my boobs are like you know yeah. like, spread apart right now and he was like well, what's the best part is like they're real yeah and i was like well this is Maybe, I guess, yeah. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, like, my boobs are in my armpits right now. Like, yeah. what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we just thinking that's cute? That's not cute. <laughs> There's nothing attractive about my boobs being in my armpits right now. <laughs> so the other day, I was, like, talking to my roommate because I was, like, God, I need to start hitting chest, like, more seriously because I was, like, my girls are my girls are split in, like, the fucking Red Sea <laughs> recently. Like, they're getting saggy and they're going in different directions. Yeah. They're, like, being, they're doing exactly what my eyes are doing, like, with my lazy eye. With one boob is, like, l- resting a lot lower than the other and the other one's pointing in the r- wrong direction. And so I'm, like, I need to get them back. <laughs> we need to bring the band back together <laughs> and, like, get everybody back to where they belong because recently it's been, like, Oh, it's dropping. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> it's dropping. I feel like, cause I feel about that about my ass. Like, yeah. Because I feel I've, like. I've, lo- I've given up on my butt. Well, so like my <laughs> boobs too. Like, I mean, because it's funny. So when I was in college, I had my nipples pierced. And, well, a nipple pierced. And like, I look at that picture sometimes, like when I first got it done. And just like, my boobs just set up like a little bit like. Yeah. Like, not, they're not sagging much. Because I don't really have boobs like that to yeah. like, be sagging. But like, they just set up like a little bit higher. And I was like, damn. There's like the difference. Yeah. And then my butt too, like I have a butt like naturally. It's just like part of my figure. Like even working out too obviously helps it. But like it's funny because I also look at pictures of me from like two years ago and it just was like a little bit higher. Yeah. And like it's just a little bit lower. Not not much, not yeah. crazy, but like it's really age and really do be having gravity work. It's yeah. crazy. It's actually crazy to think. Yeah. Because like, I don't have big boobs. Why are they a little bit saggier than normal? That's yeah. crazy. No, it is. It is quite insane how like two or three years yes. your body like ages dramatically. Yeah. Like, but like even like my face I've noticed like not that I like look significantly older, but there's like certain lines on my face where I was like, okay, you weren't here a couple of months ago. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Nice to meet you. When are you leaving? Yeah. Um, because, Exit like, stage getting, left. Yeah. Like even just like little smile lines that I didn't have before. And also like I'm just becoming hyper aware after I found like three gray hairs of like my hair. Mm-hmm. and uh, since I got it colored like that last time and like it's been I don't know probably like 12 weeks since then like my hair has grown out like I don't know like half an inch or whatever yeah and so I'm like painstakingly every morning like looking through every inch to see if like any gray has grown back mm. and I'm like gaslighting myself and being like your whole head of hair is gray and I'm like I don't know if it is but I can't tell because in certain lightings I feel like I see it and then in certain lightings I feel like I don't like I don't see it well I've convinced myself that my entire part looks gray well it doesn't I know but like I, that's where I my mind is my hair done recently yes. actually I was to get my hair done today and I canceled my appointment oh look who low of the tables have turned mm, i canceled it but i also canceled because i just like, didn't have time and i didn't feel like paying for it if i'm being completely yeah. honest with you i don't have bangs like that and then i'm just like you know what fuck it like i've always wanted to have like cool like have cool girl fucking curtain bangs and like have a cool vibe of a <laughs> hair but number one i don't have fucking textured hair yeah. i have six straight fucking hair it doesn't do shit i can blow dry it out that's sick mm-hmm. don't do anything doesn't look cool and, like, I mean, obviously, if I like blow dry it and I put it into, like, rollers, it still, like, has, like, more volume, so it looks better. But, yeah. like, nothing's cool about it. Also, I don't do anything with my hair. So, I've decided, I just, I think I'm a one-length type bitch. <laughs> and I just need to just grow my fucking hair out yeah. one fucking length and leave it the fuck alone. Yeah. So, that's what I decided. But I just, 
I didn't feel like paying for it. Yeah. I have other things. I decided I was going to a trip to Belize out of my ass. So mm-hmm. couldn't pay for my hair. Sorry. Yeah. A $200 was somewhere else. Yeah. I'm trying to grow my bangs out and it is. It's crazy how fast they grow when you want them to stay short and how slow they grow when you need them to grow. Yeah. <laughs> because Jesus Christ, it's like I'm finally at a point where I can kind of part them and it doesn't look super weird, but it still looks a bit off. You have an awkward stage. You got to go through it. But if I pull it forward, it's you can't. It's yeah. too long. No, you have to point. have an awkward stage when you grow your bangs Oh my up. God, it sucks. And like I want to get my hair cut. But it's too early to get it cut for like the shape that I want because yeah. it's too short still. So like yeah. I need to wait like a couple more weeks and then get it like the appropriate bang cut. Because right now it's still front bangs that are just pushed to the side. Yeah. But I need to get them like framed properly. But they're too short. You can't do, that, do yeah. that. But it's like it's driving me fucking crazy. And every time I go anywhere and I like I don't know how to style my hair and i have like both my cousin's weddings coming up my one of my cousin's weddings is next weekend and i'm like i don't know what the fuck to do with my hair because i can't if i touch these pieces with like a curling iron or anything it's too short yeah but if i don't like if i just wear it like this and then i curl the rest of my hair it looks stupid because it's like why are you why is that straight yes and so it's like (laughs) i don't know what to do and then when i clip it back it's like that's not the vibe for like the dress that i'm wearing it's not like a slick back you know what i mean so i'm just like i don't know what to fucking do and i'm just not vibing with it right now i feel that but i mean my they've already grown out you wouldn't even know that i even had like yeah because like i wanted her like this is the shortest part of my hair right and it's yeah my mouth and it was up to my eyes when i got my hair done last yeah but I'm just going to grow it out and have all one length hair and just say fuck it. Yeah. That's what I've decided. Yeah. I feel like layered haircuts work really well when you have like, like not texture necessarily, but like some sort of like w- curl or wave yeah. pattern to your hair. Because like for me, when my hair is all one length, it gives like Christian woman, mm-hmm. like creepy Christian lady because it's like. A, it's not super thick, and B, when I wear my hair natural and it's curly, it looks insane all straight. That I look like um, Amish if my hair is brown, but if mm. it's like black, it's it's yeah. cool. But then I did see this like girl the other day who had like a lot of like chocolate colored like tones to her hair, mm. but then it was a very long haircut and then like long layered. Yeah, and I was like, I feel like that would look good in my hair. Yeah, just doing like long layers. Yeah, I know. I my layers are honestly to the point now where they are long because my hair hasn't been cut like they're really long but i want them way shorter but i need this i need this face shit to grow out before i can justify spending the money on like an all-over haircut being a girl's hard it is and it's so like the upkeep of it all is just like ridiculous because like i don't know like i want to look cool that's the one Mm. thing like in my whole life i've always constantly like this sounds so stupid and fucking vain and whatever but i'm like i want to glow up all the time like i never want to look back and be like oh you like peaked at this age Mm. you know what i mean because like i always want to like look cool or feel cool and regardless if like it's to the beauty standard or whatever it's like i just want to like look back and be like that's fucking cool and like last year or maybe the year before last was like, no, yeah, it was probably like two years ago was like my uncomfortable. I hate everything about me. I'm just going to just like not care, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I look back on those photos. I'm like, girl, it looks like it. It looks like you hated the way that you looked and like whatever. So Mm -hmm. now I'm just trying like really hard to like not like, it's like give a fuck and not give a fuck at the same time where it's like just get whatever fucking haircut you want. And like yeah. if it flops, then it flops or whatever. And like that's why like the whole bang thing, like I was just like, who cares? Like I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And then I still love the bangs. It's just too much in the summer. Like It's I, a big upkeep, dude. It is. It's every single day. And like I'm working out every single day. And so that means I have to wash my hair every single day because I'm sweating so much. And, like, my hair is just, like, I think that's another reason why it's, like, the, not that it's damaged a lot more from it, but, like, it's all, it's definitely taking a lot more, like, 
shit and especially around my hairline because i have to fucking blow dry out my bangs every single day and like style them and like i'm agitating that hair there and i'm like i feel like it's like causing me to have like receding hairline <laughs> Like no faster than it was when I didn't have bangs because well, my I hair's think once breaking you stop already. Using, here. Like heat and like all like pulling it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Whatever. Yeah, honestly, that's how and I like feel. Bobby pinning it to the gym and like having to wear a hat to pin that's it back. When I like have my hair back and it's like buttoned for a couple of days in a row, I'm like, am I balding? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, yeah, that is like really really bad for your hair to do like all the time. Well, I do it at least three times a week. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> or to pull it back when it's wet like never pull your hair back oh when it's i don't wet. but i've been trying to be better about like letting my hair stay down and then i actually got like a dark dry shampoo mm-hmm. so i can like have my hair down longer for extra days and then only have my hair up like once yeah and then because i'm trying to be better about it but yeah i'm just so used to it of having my hair up and just back that like yeah i don't know being a girl is hard being a girl is hard i mean it's hard to fit in it's hard to do the things that all us girls have to do but if you want to be part of a girls club i'm doing a little project right now that i am uh releasing starting on april 25th it's a solo podcast that i have started called the girls club um if you guys are interested or you want to check that out It's going to live on my personal YouTube for now. I might make a separate YouTube, but my personal YouTube has like no subscribers. So like I I need something to get that shit off the ground (laughs) and some reason to post over there. (laughs) So it's going to live there. So it's at Starnsy on Instagram. The first episode will be April 25th, which is next Thursday. And um, it's just me talking to the camera, sitting in my bed in my room. And it's a little girls club and... Uh, I hope you guys join and check it out. And uh, the first episode is fun. I <laughs> kind of ramble about random shit. Kind of exactly what this is uh, for an hour by myself in my room while my roommate was downstairs watching Star Trek. So um, <laughs> it was a fun it was a fun little thing. And I'm really excited for the project. It's very uh, me and very. um <sighs> It's explicit and it's ADHD filled and fueled and uh, it should be a lot of fun. There might be guests from time to time, but for the majority of the time, it is probably just going to be me. But yeah, it's called The Girls Club. It'll be available everywhere on Thursday. The trailer actually comes out today. So I'll link it at or in the description of this episode so you can go check it out over there and then subscribe that way when the first episode drops, you'll get reminded um, and yeah, you can follow me on YouTube because that's where the YouTube version will go out. It'll go out the same day on Thursdays. Uh, and my YouTube is just Starnsy. But yeah. Yay for Emily. Yay. This is something we've been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah. So we're all happy <coughs> for her. So go over there and support her. Yes. In check this that new out. little project. Yep. So um, kind of piggybacking off of Emily's like new little endeavor. We have some... I guess housekeeping to do next week. Some yeah. little like updates for you guys. Some things that like you guys are already like privy to, but not yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So definitely be around for next week. <laughs> it's going to be a changing experience for everybody. Yes. Like you guys, us, all the things. So we kind of can't wait for you guys. So well, I guess we can wait. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know how to do this. This is weird. I mean, it's very weird. I think next week's episode is going to be um, a different episode. Yeah, for sure. I think it's going to be really good, though. Um, yeah, I think so, too. But I definitely think it's going to be different. And I think that you guys honestly are going to enjoy it. And um, we love you. and We love all of your support. And I know that you guys love us. So I think that next week's episode will be something that is just, you know, a part of the ride and a part of this journey. Yep. And with that, we'll see you next week. Thank you guys for listening to the episode of Society 97. My name is Kamra K. You can find me at Kamra K on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I'm Emily. And you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Starnsy. And go follow, go, what is it called on, on Apple? Subscribe or listen? Uh, go listen. Yeah. Go listen to my new podcast. The trailer is out right now. The Girls Club. Check it out. The link is in the description. And.
yeah we'll see you guys next week okay see you bye. next week okay bye <laughs> hello hello is this thing on (laughs) hello please take your seats and welcome to the first official meeting of the girls club give it up my name's emily and i'm the president and founding member of this club as club members you'll have two main responsibilities i'll go over those now Number one is easy. (laughs) Be present at all club meetings. These will occur every Thursday. And number two, have fun. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Each club meeting will consist of general girl talk, hot gossip, and the occasional rant on all the fucked up shit that happens in this world. (coughs) Whoa! And yeah, that's about it. Welcome to the girls club. The girls club, the girls club, the girls club. The girls club, the girls club, the girls club. It's my club and I'm a girl, yeah. <laughs>